And you seem very upbeat about it. So your expectations are that's what's going to happen? Yeah, I, th- I think that they're going to trim their wings um, a little bit because uh, there's some negative reports coming out about the Turkish economy and also just they've been in power since 2002. So, you know, people get tired of who's in power after that long. Great point. Let's talk about President Obama. He can probably actually take credit for a lot of progress that's been made in Pakistan. And I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, that it would be even more so than President Bush and more so than President Clinton. However, you have news on your blog that Pakistan is actually more aligned with the Taliban than we thought. And maybe all of this progress that we thought was happening is really not happening. Can you explain? Right. Well, the new revelations are that Pakistani intelligence, on the orders of the Pakistani government, we're not talking about rogue elements, we're talking about the agency as a whole, is helping at least a very significant branch of the Taliban located in their Balochistan province. And uh, actually members of the Taliban's leadership council are actually on the payroll of Pakistani intelligence. So that, that's a much stronger connection um, than, than uh, we had previously thought. But at the same time, the Pakistanis fight them. I mean, last summer, the Taliban forces launched an offensive against the government and came within 60 miles of the capital. So, so it's a very tricky situation. But in regards to your first comment, yeah, I think absolutely President Obama has a superior Pakistan policy than Clinton or Bush ever had. He's actually increased the amount of airstrikes on Pakistani ter- territory by three times. Uh, more than what President Bush had. We're actually launching three airstrikes on average a week. Wow, I, I did not know that, actually. <laughs> so thanks for telling us that. Why, why his focus on Pakistan? Does he really believe this is the heart of the Taliban, not Afghanistan? Yes, and I think he would be accurate in saying that. I mean, the leadership councils are all in, in Pakistan. Um, you really can't solve Afghanistan unless you solve Pakistan. And, uh, I mean, there are just open, safe harbors there, such as at North Waziristan, at Baluchistan, where these guys and associated terrorist groups are just allowed to run around as they wish. I mean, some other groups, like Lashkari Teba, J.C. Muhammad, they actually run schools and hospitals and social services that haven't been shut down. Wow. Wow, very interesting. So, so what is the negative aspect here? You said the, the upside is President Obama is very aware of what is happening with the Taliban. And their stronghold that they do have on, on Pakistan. But the downside is the Pakistan just wants to play both sides of the fence. Are they only acting as our ally when we give them an incentive to do so? And if so, how far is that going to go? Or is it that Pakistan really does want to rid the Taliban to have a peace in its nation, God forbid? And, and it's actually working towards that. It's just taking a very bizarre approach. Mm-hmm. Well, the Taliban infrastructure in, Afga- in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, for that matter, are very wide. There's a Pakistani branch, there's an Afghan branch, and some of these elements of the Taliban and Taliban uh, allied network uh, really want to overthrow the Pakistani government. And that's why you've seen the military launch offenses in the Swat Valley and South Waziristan to really get rid of those elements. But it's not a war on the Taliban as a whole. The ones that have the closest ties to the Pakistani intelligence, those are, guys are kept around um, because that gives Pakistan leverage over the peace process in Afghanistan. Because, uh, as I'm sure you know, Afghanistan's been talking about negotiating with the Taliban to try and make them like a political party. So Pakistan still has designs on Afghanistan. They still want to be the main player there deciding what's going on. And then there's just a, a strain within the Pakistani government, especially the intelligence service, that is just plain radical Islamic. Wow. Okay, um, word came yesterday, or a few days ago, that, that Britain, let's turn the tables a little bit, was a little incensed about what was going on with BP, and, and that our media is coming down extra hard on BP. Everybody seems to hate them here in, in America. Do you feel the same way about BP, that the media just makes you want to hit your head with a hammer, or do you feel like it is justified criticism, and how is it affecting our relationship with Britain? Um, I think in terms of the relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom, it's not going to be affected at all by this. Um, I, I, I don't even know why the British are spending their time on this. I mean, look at the facts. The British Petroleum screwed up. I mean, this spill occurred on their watch, and Americans are very angry because uh, due to various regulations involved, BP technically is only liable for a certain amount. I think it's like $75 million of the, of the spill. Now, realistically, President Obama is probably going to give them the full bill, and they're going to have to oblige because people are so angry at them. Uh, but I, I really don't see this affecting any type of security relationship or uh, affecting the relationship at all between the U.S. and Britain. So you don't, you don't have any worries about the criticism, no? Absolutely not. Okay. And let's talk one last thing. If you did have some solutions, what would it be 
for President Obama. If you had lunch with him tomorrow, but you want to tell him a little bit about Pakistan and how to stabilize both Afghanistan and Pakistan, would you say, yes, he's doing it right by executing several strikes a week? Or would you say that there's something else that we could be doing, but we're not? Pakistan is just going to have to keep doing what he's doing and keep pressure, putting as much pressure on Pakistan as possible. I would even have my officials uh, anonymously leak information embarrassing the Pakistani government to the worldwide media so that, they, so that everybody knows uh, that they're hiding them and that this game isn't going to work anymore. But really, I don't see too much else what he could be doing. I do think that he should expand the drone campaign to c include more groups inside of Pakistan and just say, look, it, it's over. We're not going to just fight with one hand uh, tied behind our back anymore. Any radical Islamic group harbored by Pakistan will come under fire. And the Pakistanis will say, oh, well, that's going to bring up a lot of domestic pressure on us. Well, too bad. You're, you're, you decided to hold on to these groups, and we're going to now make it in your interest to clamp down so that we don't have to. Are they only clamping down on the Taliban or even at their own selective moments, or are they actually clamping down on these other radicals as well? They go by an individual by individual basis. Al Qaeda, they don't like. They're doing an all right job on that. But I mean, Taliban figures that the Pakistani intelligence has good a good relationship with. They maintain that good relationship. Some of them get arrested and then they leave. That's what happened when uh, the second in command of the Taliban was arrested, uh, and that led to the capture of two other aides, and the Pakistanis then released them. So, it, it, you know, they're not going after the group as a whole. They're saying, who are the guys that we like? Who have we done business with in the past? All right, we're going to keep taking care of those guys. Gotcha. So uh, would you say to, to President Obama to put some type of incentive for Pakistan to go after everybody? Yes, I, I mean, I think that uh, really the drone campaign is, is where it's at. The Pakistani public hates it, and they get angry at the Pakistani government whenever it happens. And uh, then the Pakistanis protest us. But, you know, we've, ju we've just got to say to them, if you don't want to deal with that domestic pressure, then you take care of the problem for us. Understood. And hold firm, right? I'm sorry? And hold firm, yes? Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan. What is the website for the Christian Action Network? That's ChristianAction.org. And also, you are the founder of WorldThreats.com, where you can find Ryan Morrow's blog. Very, very interesting. You know, when I was reading it today, it reminded me a lot of Strat for how you break it down by country and how you break it down by an analysis. So kudos to you for, for following all of this nefarious activity <laughs> all around the globe at once. So congratulations and keep up the great work. Thanks for having me on again. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Coming up after this break, we're going to speak in with David Kaiser. He's going to talk to us a little bit more about national security. He's going to talk about Afghanistan, but also two other big issues President Obama has on his plate. And that, of course, is the oil crisis and still the economy. Stay with us on The Political Chick. We'll be right back.